I'm sure you guys, I'm not, we're not the only ones that like looking. This is Bruce looking right outside the window. That is Lily. Oops, I had to get it off. Focus differently. That's Lily. I'm sure you guys, I'm not, we're not the only ones that like looking. This is Bruce looking right outside the window. Here is 60 minutes with uh, carbon fiber being like a string per the engineer's statement. Here we go. 60 seconds. Uh -huh. it happens over time and over dives. I mean, carbon fiber uh, is actually essentially a long piece of string, you know, a long piece of fiber. Essentially a long piece of string, a long piece of fiber. Rob McCallum worked with OceanGate as a consultant early on, but was alarmed by the company's experimental approach. A carbon fiber sub that's essentially a home build with no independent oversight is not up for the task, as, as we can now see. I guess he hired the... I guess I see why Russ doesn't like 50-year-old white men. <laughs> he hired this guy... <laughs> and as soon as he's dead, all of a sudden he comes up and says, uh, yeah, I didn't do a great job as a consultant. I'm sure they told him that they were working with carbon fiber. So apparently he's not up to the skill set to do it. And he got bounced. Can you explain that a little for those of us who aren't familiar with carbon composites? Why is it not appropriate for that environment? What happens over time and over dives? I mean, carbon fiber uh, is actually essentially a long piece of string. Ooh, smirky son of a bitch. Listen, carbon fiber is not a long piece of string. No more than your window that you close, your vinyl window, is just essentially a piece of uh, plastic, uh, a bubble. These are just base materials. That's for making plastics. Thermoplastics like your vinyl windows and carbon fiber is just the base material. You have to do something with it, like add a epoxy, etc. Shape it, etc. Just like steel, molten metal, before it becomes the shape that you end up with. A little, a little uh, piece of foam. Now it, it's changed its whole format. They heated it and reshaped and extruded it and that's your window there oh wait a minute it's no more than uh molten steel molten metal is no more steel a uh, piece of i-beam than molten metal together they're not the same they're one you can't use you'll burn the hell up if you touch it and one is the finished product so they keep picking on carbon fiber not the finished product. The finished product is what we're talking about here. A five inch hull that was tested by in NASA's chambers. NASA has the rights to them. A chamber, and they only allow people that are forward thinking and can bring humanity to a next level, is what it's all about. So NASA thought good of it, of good of, of good of his, uh, his this five inch deal. And then he was experimental. Yeah, well, you know, you know, you went down on experimental sub. Don't cry. Why are you crying foul? You paid for it. Some people said he didn't get back refunds. Look, guys, that they knew that when they signed up that if we go out and we can't dive, there's no refund because the ship and everything costs so much to rent. He didn't own that 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 uh, mothership as you guys call as you guys call it. So no more than you and I pay for. A trip to go somewhere. We can't say, "Oh, the weather now is bad. I want a refund." Now there, there, there is no refund with that. The trip is, uh, you know, there's no insurance policy to give you back your money. These are millionaires and billionaires. You think they care about that little quarter million, that quarter quarter million dollars, that, the, the chance to go out there and and dive? They had a few days of a window, but sometimes, uh, you know, you win, and sometimes you don't. Sometimes you feel like a nut. Sometimes you don't you know, a long piece of fiber. And it's wound around and around uh, a shape, in this case a cylinder, and in a medium of, of resin or glue. And once it sets... 
I'm going to tell you now, I think that little liner there, that little thing there was just a liner. I think that was a liner for the ultimate shell build. I think they've been put, they've been, that Russ bamboozled us with the, with the showing us this. It's right here that we've been bamboozled. This is not the finished carbon fiber, all the layers. When Ocean Gate, receives his Ocean Gate ink, when they talk about it, no, nah, I don't think this is the finished product. I think they put it on the big machine, on the big boy, and they set it at the right cross hatching. I think this is just the liner that Hocus Pocus Alakazam, this is not worth our friggin' effort to look at it. Fibers that are held in place by the resin. That's right, they're held in place by the resin. And also the pattern, the design, how you're going to shear and everything else. In this case, it's the interface ring that shows the failure. Also, he's, his extrapolations are off, and he's putting his finger on the pulse where it shouldn't be. Um, but unlike metal, which is predictable, you know, you can give an engineer any kind of metal and give them the gauge, you know, the thickness. Oh, yeah? Any kind of gauge, any thickness? All right. That's nice. You said I can give them any thickness. All right. Uh, since nobody normally does five inches of carbon fiber, thickness of uh, gauge, steel, thickness of the steel, mm, seven feet um, by ten foot long, seven feet thick with a hollow tube um, of approximately five inch hollow diameter inside. Okay. Give me my answer. Yeah, nobody's got that data. Nobody's got that data I just made up. So, you can't, he's just, he's, this is just bullshit bedazzling guy wanting to get a 60 seconds on 60 minutes. Saying that, oh, you can give an, differences, you can give an engineer any numbers. I just gave it to him. No, that, the, the, what I just gave you, no, nobody's got data on that. Doesn't exist. Well, this carbon fiber was being tested. It, the data was there. It just misinterpreted the data. That's all. And also, he doesn't know how to pay attention to his real-time monitoring system. Well, past tense. Kind of metal and gives them the gauge, you know, the thickness and the application it's going to be used in. And they'll be able to calculate for you exactly how it's going to act. Carbon fiber, you can't do that because... It is, it's a material that's a composite. The fiber can vary, the, the resin can vary, the, the, the way it's built on the day can vary. No, no. Carbon fiber, you can do that if you do the proper testing. It will tell you how it's behaving. And then you've got to make it destructive. You've got to go ahead and dig down in there and take a look at it. This ring is the whole joke of the whole thing, the interface ring. So it's much harder to predict the second thing is that each of those fibers is made up of actually many, many microfibers. Wait a minute. Steel is made up of many, many, many microfibers, if you will. So here we have it. Now, highlighted part. Iron in its solid state is like, is, like all other metals, polycrystalline. That is, it consists of many crystals that join one another on their boundaries. A crystal is, well, is a well-ordered arrangement of atoms that can best be pictured as a spear touching one another. Hmm. About the same difference. Here we go. And that's your polycrystalline definition at the top, if you will. Steel is a, a composite material. Multiple carbon, different, different manufacturers, different design, different multiple makeups. So, yeah, you got microfractures internally, etc. It really matters how... Uh, how steel is made, manufactured. In fact, the titanium rings need a special, uh, a special plant that only makes the titanium rings. So that kind of defeats that about you need a specialty. Yeah, you need a specialty with steel also. And if they start to crack or separate or are damaged in any way, then that can lead to sort of a cascading event over a series of dives where the it's interesting that he said the uh, carbon fibers was fracturing, fracturing and not the uh, epoxy fracturing, but the carbon fiber. That's uh, interesting. Um, no one's done a 5-inch hole like this before and put it down 6,000 PSI with this much pressure and um, with this much pressure around it in this shape and 
dunk tanked it this many times. So the behavior is exactly how it behaved. And then remember he had some shallow dives, some hit and misses. So that's cycling also. So no one's done this before besides him. And he did it, what, 4.5 times? I think it's 4.5, 4, 4. maybe it was 11.5. I'm giving him the half point, in other words. That he made it down again. I'm giving that to him. Maybe he came close. He didn't make it there all the way. But he's still getting a full half point from me. You know, if he came back up, he get the full point. But 4.5, 11.5. How many times has things been in the water? I don't know. But down to the Titanic. Aren't we at 4.5? Well, actually, we would be at 5. Because he made it down. And we didn't make it to the full 5. Wait a minute. 4. Point, no, if you make it to the Titanic... So back here would be the fifth one then. Yeah, I got that. There we go. So if you make it home, that's one. But if you only make it down, that's a half. So making it down, you've made it halfway there. The other way back would be one, one point. So you get a half going down. And if you come back, you get the full point. So he made 4.5, a half going down. Yeah, I'm sticking with that. A hole gets weaker and weaker. The opposite is true with metal. So the Titan could have several successful dives, which it did, but then fail. Yes, and you're not able to predict that failure point. Well, you're not able to predict that failure point. You know, I just came across the Titan. I can predict. I see the, I see the damn testing. It's predictable. It's just that can you read the data in it, or do you also play video games on the side? You'd be surprised on the engineers. No offense to you engineers playing video games out there. You know, you can't have, this is not, it's like, you know, you got to be obsessed with it. So you can't just be, uh, you know, partially dabbling. And then the rest of your life, you have a life. No, it's got to be your life. <laughs> you can't have a life. you got to be like me. No life. Just uh, whatever, whatever floats your boat. Get it? So if we were to build a submersible out of titanium or steel, we would know at what point it would uh, fail. And I have uh, no idea at what point he would know that. Because they don't take the vessels to failure. When you're building these vessels, they're not taking them to failure. So now he's just talking trickery shit here, just so you know. The United States Navy does not take its vessels to implosion because it costs too damn much. And they, so they stay away from it. So it goes to say 1-5, the theoretical model of that boat goes to 1,500 1, feet. They will not let that vessel go below 1,000. Everything is 1,000, and then you got the other half, 500 for fluff. They are not doing it. Do you imagine the, the slogan? Come join the United States Navy, the uh, submarine thing. We only lose a vessel once every few years. You probably got a better chance of dying in a car accident, that type of, you know, fake fakery, they say. No, no, no. They can't afford implosions, and if an implosion happens, they got to blame it on something else. they got to come up with something else that wasn't, you know, we don't want people quitting the Navy, right? So you have to show that you're just not doing it. You're just not going to crush depth. And then we can dial it back to its, uh, to its safe working depth. So he just said that the metal ship is dying, you can just dial it back. Well, I guess the fucking curse didn't get that message in a couple of those ves steel vessels that went down. They didn't get it. I mean, this is just crazy to what he just said. We would know at what point it yield. We would know we well, out of titanium or steel. We would know at what point it would uh, fail. And then we can dial it back to its, uh, to its safe working depth. <laughs> that was some bullshit shit there you just said. <laughs> These ships that go, the submarines that go down are of steel, are made of steel. So this is just bullshit what he just said. He couldn't sell water to a man in a desert or pour piss out of a boot with the directions written on the bottom. All right, let me get you the cardboard model to show you that cardboard, cardboard can be made to be so strong as a composite with just using glue. Hmm. I don't want to make it home. I want to see it done in the factory. Oh, 
What the hell? What did I just stumble into? Just paper tubes. Okay, let's see what that says. Yeah, baby. Yeah, baby. Look at that glue. And there's metering on the other side. Yeah, baby. Who's your daddy now? There's your cardboard too. Make it, baby. Make it. Make it. Yeah. Who's your tube now, baby? I'm going to show you a tube. Make it. Make that tube. Yeah, slap a sticker on that iron right there. Yeah, yeah. Composite tubes, glue and paper. Yeah, baby. Do it. Oh, what's that? That's a little one. Should have looked bigger, didn't it? Make that little tube. Oh, make that giant tube. Yeah, baby. Yeah, just just paper tubes, guys, if you want to find their channel. Just paper tubes. Oh, yeah. This is tube porn. Yeah, hit that, hit that, uh, bracket. Oh, oh, there you are. Bad looking, nasty looking tubes. That's what I'm going to show you, something like that one. Look at those nasty composites. Yeah, baby. Oh, a whole pallet of them. Oh, spin it, baby. Show me the backside. Spin it, rotate. Oh, yeah, hit it, hit it. Oh, yeah, for you subscribers watching, listening only on audio, you got to watch the video so you can see what I'm talking about. Oh, cut it, cut it. So, what the hell? Oh, that was, oh, it was a knife just spun around. I got it. Without going back. Oh, checking it for size. He went the right length. Get that length. Box it, baby. Put, bring that box out. Oh, yeah. Ship it, ship it. Ship it. Yeah, is that it? Oh man, I can watch that again. I can watch that again, that was so good. Look at that, look at those composite tubes there, baby. What the hell, somebody trying to pull a fast one. Look up here, guys. Somebody, oh, it might be the uh, editing software, look. Yeah, I'm gonna go with that. Yeah, yeah, down the bottom there, it's edit. Yeah, yeah, I caught it right in the middle. So yeah, look at that, look at that. Look at those tubes just laying on top of each other like that, just all wrapped up. Look at that. Yeah, those are baby tubes, because there's a, a roller here. All right, so the tube, I'm gonna show you my tube out, <laughs> I'm gonna show you the tube outside. That one I went a little too far on and I didn't mean it. All right, let me go from here. Okay, what we have before us. Steel, 45 pound weight, radius. Paper. Oops. Too soon. Oops. Too soon. Too soon. No trick, Ray. I grabbed a random one from there, from there. This is your laminate. Your epoxy. Look. I mean, your, your uh, plies of uh, carbon fiber, if you will. Look. Nothing. Moldable. Shapeable. Nothing. All the way back like that if you if you wanted to. Before but the carbon fiber locking in. Once you give it its shape. Once you give it its shape, all the multiple layers. This is the mat look at that. You create all these little blocks. Once you give it its shape and you lock it in, you get something equivalent to this. Let me put this down. Now remember on the lathe, I showed you guys how it, when it goes round and round, you're going to have to come up with a pattern, a screw, a distance, your thread, your pitch. This is this tube's pitch. You would think of, well, they just ran a bunch of one direction. They didn't. They ran it in this, in this screwed pattern. And the paper you're looking at is this wide. All of it is this wide. It's not three foot long paper that they manufactured and rolled. They got these strips 
and they made this. They made this. Beautiful. Yep, make sure I'm alive. And between there to hold it together, it's glue. Pre-pregged, right? Pre-pregged glue. I think they load, layer, roll, layer. This is pre-pegged, pre pre-pregged paper. Look at this thing. Cat hair. All right. Shout out to all my lovely cat donations, donators. All right, look at that. This thing is strong. It is strong, 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 strong. It is paper. I just showed you what it was. It's just... Nothing special, no magic at. You lose that glue though, you're back to paper as you saw. Let's go with the 45 pound weight. Right there it says 45 on it. That's pound, not kilos for my foreign people. Let's put it here. I'm uh, making sure you can see it. I'm over here. Inside. As I'm inside, forces down here want to pull this direction. Carbon fiber works in that direction, right? It wants, since it's pulling down that way, it wants to pull down there. On the other side, the same thing. It wants to pull down in the other opposing direction also. But it can't pull down because to deflect this tube to make it go out, bulge out, well, you told me it's got 6,500 pounds of force out here. Same equal weight is everywhere. This 45 pound weight is everywhere around it. Theoretically, underneath there might be a little bit more but it's around it, the same 45 pound weight. So if it's trying to push out here with 45 pounds of force, it's being met here, 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 here with 45 pounds of force, creating anti-buckling. Now let's go to the edge. This is where the ring is. Where well, the ring is, a titanium ring has the same force, and this has the same force as outside, the same 45 pound weight, let's say. The titanium ring is not married, is married to this with just glue. But at the very edge, see at the very, when we're at the very edge of this tube, we know no longer, trying to get my lighting, I guess. That's not bad, you guys can follow that. We're, once we're at the very edge of this tube, we no longer have the advantage of being behind there, the extra behind it. So right here at the very edge, I think explains why we see it fail in the testing because it, it's just a lip. It's not much left. And that lip doesn't have the, the luxury of having the extra 45 pounds behind it. But, it. but what it has is inside, he made the lip with that lip inside to help hold it like a clamp here and here. So if you try to push down on this, you're gonna have to push down on that lip, internal lip. The question is, can that internal lip take 6,500 PSI under those conditions or did the lip itself, as I showed you in one of the videos, rotate off, showed you with the cat, and get bundled down there with the, uh, all right, let's just lift up the weight, with the, uh, I'm going to put it at the edge. You might have saw some deflection, but you have to realize this is just paper, just paper, I just showed it to you, just paper, and it's taking a 45 pound weight point loading of less than one square inch. And it's just paper. But this paper has been glued like the carbon fiber hull. Multiple layers glued together. Let's see if I can zoom in on that. And so if it's making noises at that depth that it didn't make on the last dive, then we can stop the dive, we can go up, we can find out what might have happened. Um, we made one hull, uh, I took it to 4,000 meters, um, uh, and it made a lot of noise, which is a very sphincter tightening experience. So this is the company no longer worked with, but you see that model in the background and that layup, that design on that inner, inner tube, inner tube section and his computer model computer generated etc but he, he bailed on his company i wonder why though you know he didn't like the, the results of the test so he sort of blames the company maybe um 
We brought it back, and it wasn't getting quieter on the second dive. It should have been dramatically quieter. If you think about it, when you get to this uh, maximum pressure, it's a thing called the Kaiser effect. You get a lot of popping and crackling. And the next time you go to that pressure, you should have a lot less. All those weak fibers and voids have all been taken care of. And this all wasn't doing it. So we scrapped it. We went back. We built another one. The first one we had done was with a uh, highly recommended uh, marine manufacturer. We went to aerospace quality. We use the same uh, prepreg that's used on the 787 with our partners. And we couldn't have done any of this without partners. A uh, great partner in Electro Impact up in Everett. So this is Electro Impact, and that's the machine in the background, that white one you see in the background. There, and that's the one in the front there too, you see it working. That's laying a carbon fiber, and that's a heat, uh, the light you see, it's heated also at the same time. So this, what we're told about it, you know, it was just a liner. That was just a liner, the first one we saw. It was smoke and mirrors. Here's the machine. Great to be in this community where there is such a... Um preponderance of expertise in titanium and carbon fiber and manufacturing and engineering. We did work with Janneke, Boeing, NASA. There's 667 layers of carbon fiber in just a, what's called a 090 uh, axial and... Um, um. So here's what the, one of the engineers that worked on it published, that there's 660 layers. So he just said 667. There's a lot of funkiness going on here rotational uh, layout, which is not normally done, but in the ocean, that's all you see. You don't get any torsional moments. We built this hull up. We um, were, uh, tested it at the Deep Ocean Test Facility in Annapolis, Maryland, an amazing uh, facility, the only one on the planet where you can put something like that in. Uh, I know the questions are about the Titanic. Um, I will get into that eventually, but I wanted to get into this. Um, so anyway, this what's this contraption? This is the robotic arm that was used to lay down all those 660 layers of tape. Uh, this, uh, this is a company in, uh, in Mukilteo, Washington, near us, that called, that called Electro Impact. There we go. Basically, this is a robotic That's tape okay. dispenser. That's a very uh, simplistic way to think of it. Um, <laughs> right takes these little strips of carbon fiber tape and it lays it down in a very precise way and so the that it doesn't overlap tape. from layer to layer uh, uh, as you as it goes around and uh, it also heats it up as it's depositing it so because you have to you know, and this thing at the very tip is a, is a, is a heater and so it deposits that tape and um, uh, in a very precise manner and uh, we had to do it in, uh, it took, actually took months. It actually took a couple of months for this robot. So, do you understand what he's saying? It took a couple of months. So they probably didn't, he doesn't give more details, but they probably um, put a layer on, went to get it uh, um, um, vacuum sealed, and, and, and uh, also what they stated at one time was autoclaved. And he probably added multiple layers, I'm thinking, to make it, so, because he, if you just did five inches, I can imagine that might be a problem trying to get uh, the heat differential problems with uh, setting it up. So they kept us in the dark about that, and now here's the detail on that. Thanks, shout out to a, uh, a subscriber that sent me the link to this, and uh, thanks you guys in the private room for uh, keeping this under your hat until I'm doing the video now, because I already shared with them arm to build that hall. Uh, it was a very long process, but um, but we we learned along the way. Uh, we did some test builds before we built the actual hall, and, uh, and so we knew how to uh, avoid the issues that we are having earlier. And so we had... Uh, Great to be in this community where there is such a um, preponderance of expertise in titanium and carbon fiber and manufacturing and engineering. We did work with Janneke, Boeing, NASA, there's 667 layers of carbon fiber in just a, what's called a 090 uh, axial and um, um, uh, rotational uh, layout, which is not normally done. But in the ocean, that's all you see. You don't get any torsional moments. We built this hull up. We um, were uh, tested it at the deep ocean. All right, so let me just with this right here. They, they tested the pressure vessel. They tested the vessel and... Um, then he added this rib inside here, this cage, this rib cage inside the vessel. 
And I think that is part of the problem that that creates a uh, elastic can float inside there when it when it when the uh, tube uh, contracts uh, somewhat with the pressure. Did did they make this too taut in there? Um, you know, it's interesting. This guy also shows the rendering of the newer bracket. This video is done a year ago, and uh, he's showing the rendering of the newer bracket. It's some type of hydraulic rear end. You see this little part there. So here is the image of the glass, the dome that goes in, say single cup, and then the uh, right here is the, it's going off to be tested at this point, but they do not have the internal rib cage in there. So there, there it is with the internal cup, single cup, right there, that's the lens. Alright, I don't know what other people are showing you that the lens are, they're just blowing smoke. That's the lens. That's the profile. The, now it gets lapped, so just like you lap a car valves, you lap this the same way. You get it in there and grind until it's, it's married up perfectly. Keep lapping and lapping, and that's how you get that perfect fit. And you probably use some uh, indicator. Hey, George, George is making his attention be known that he needs to be known. Hey boy, so that was going off to be tested right there. Um, that's in a, inside view. So on July 3rd, I looked at my thumbnail of this. So on July 3rd, right here, is a video here that we're about to, about to slide over and show to you. I found out that we were being played a bit because I found on Ocean Gate's website that this is just the inner ring. To reach the Titanic and 50% of the world's oceans, we started uh, construction of the Cyclops II. The first step in this process is the fabrication of the carbon fiber wound cylinder that serves as a center section of the pressure vessel, carbon fiber wound. Carbon fiber and resin will now enter the curing phase and then will be ready for mating with the titanium hemisphere. The first step in the process is the fabrication of the carbon fiber wound, cylind uh, wound cylinder that serves as the center section of the pressure vessel. Okay, one more time. The first step in the process is the fabrication of the carbon fiber wound cylinder that serves as the center section of the pressure vessel shown in the accompanying video. This is crazy, right? Well, look at this. We've heard 666 layers. We've heard from one report, 468 was supposed to be it. Then we heard... Um, 600 layers from the one I just showed you, and now Oceangate publishes uh, on the 17th, June 17, 27. This is what 800 layers of carbon fiber looks like for the Ocean Gate uh, for the Ocean Gate inspection cross section of the access. Remember, it's around that that lawsuit thing. That's that flashlight thing I joked about. But that's 800 layers. It says the 667 layers of carbon fiber. Uh, in just a what's called a zero ninety uh, axial and um, um, uh, rotational uh, layout, which is not normally done. But in the ocean, that's all you see. You don't get any torsional moments. So it appears that you know that we've got some weird data going on here. One, it seems like we've got multiple versions made, including one with eight hundred layers. All right, in the background is where the tanks would go, and this is that rib section I'm talking about that creates an issue. And this would be the uh, 2017. This would be the Cyclops II, which we know that gets called the Titan. It just says the hull will dive to the Titan. See the date? So, yeah, that, that ties in at 800 layers. They're saying 800. Then he says 667. The other one says 600. So it appears that, you know, they've got to count some layers here. they got some math problems, right? So before and after. Oh, right. It's a cut away screen you see it guys so you're not getting confused it's uh, they, they merge two images so this is not you know they couldn't take a before and after at the same time right so you're looking at a before and after now that's the ring there that's the ring there and actually it's going up like that and then well i can't quite see that but i see this banding here created I don't know if this is uh, that texture. If it is, wow, it really changed textures over a few dips, didn't it? 
that or they replace the uh, they replace this coating. All right, it says about oh, take six thousand psi or maximum depth of four thousand meters. This is the Titan. And there's the Titan Bowl. Titan Bowl. That's the real Titan Bowl. Titan Bowl. Tighten her up. And there, there's Houston, Texas. And the machining. And what I was trying to figure out, remember, this is where the ring goes. It goes on there. I'm trying to figure out the edge of that. That's not to, that's not to happen in here. And it's 3,000 pounds. This is where I get my three grand from. See it right here in my mouse? 3,000 pounds. Okay. What can I get there? Okay, 667 layers. And so trying to not say he's lying, then I would say it's uh, 133 layers is the, is the first layer, in the, is the first um, band. The, 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 the part that they connect to, and that would be like right about there. That part there, then the interface. Uh, I'm sorry, the uh, that part right there. Maybe that's 133 layers, and this is the 667. So, and then you would see that he said it took many months. I see a appears to be a, you know multiple lines. I would argue that uh, that's our our, our bonding um, areas for resin where they took it off and baked it. Took it off, baked it, took it off, baked it, took it off and baked it. And then the last one's a very thin layer. Took it off and baked it, baked it. So I'm just guessing that they baked this a few times, you know, per like this, what they're saying. And so he wasn't even counting. If, if, if it's 800 layers, he wasn't even counting the first 130 as anything. But it seems to be fully in contact. So once you make that, that rib goes in there. I think that creates a pressure differential. You create a, a beam across there. Unless that beam can roll up and you get, you know, roll up into the vessel with the shrinkage uh, of the vessel, then you're creating some serious sh stress curves right here. If you can move the lady out of the way, oof. Um, there's a beam to floor that goes across, as I showed you uh, in that guy's video. I'm out.